In this video, I will explain what custom metrics are and how to configure them in Google Analytics 4. Before we continue, I wanted to give you a quick introduction to metrics and how are they different from dimensions. And this applies not only to Google Analytics, but to all analytics tools in general. So dimensions are attributes of something, for example, attributes of product, attributes of an event, attributes of user, and they describe something. And here are several examples. For example, page URL is a dimension. Then we have traffic source. It can be google.com, analyticsmania.com, something else. Then we have coupon code, item category, user country, and these are just several examples. So don't limit yourself. So as you can see, they describe something and we can use this to create segments, audiences. For example, you can create a report where all the hits are only of those sessions where traffic source is google.com. And as for metrics, they are quantitative measurements. They let you count things. Or in other words, they are numbers. Although in some cases, numbers can also be dimensions, but let's just keep things simple right now. So here are several examples. Order total is a metric. Event count, definitely a metric. Then we have number of logins, then how many times did a certain client make purchases on your site, then a product price can also be a metric. So as you can see, these are numbers and we can count them. For example, if one visitor made four purchases and the other one made five purchases, then in total you have nine purchases. So the metric is number of purchases, which is nine. But in this case, things like order IDs or coupon codes, they are dimensions. So if we take a look at the reports in Google Analytics 4, on the left side, you see dimension, which is page path. And on the right side, we have two metrics. One is active users and then the event count. In this case, I have filtered down to the page view event. So these are the numbers of page views on these particular pages. And while there are many built-in metrics in Google Analytics 4, sometimes you need more because Google Analytics is built as a tool for as many businesses as possible. So it cannot automatically adapt to every business's needs. In other words, if you want to have more, you must customize. That's why you can send additional metrics to Google Analytics 4 and they're called custom metrics. For example, here we have a dimension, which is page path. And this is the list of pages where visitors did something. However, here I have two metrics. One is active users. So you remember that from one of the previous slides. And here I have another metric, which is video views. So this metric will show how many times that my visitors started to watch a video. And this is not the only example of custom metrics. Here are several more. For example, if you want together with purchases, you can send the discounted amount as a custom metric. And later you can see in your reports how much discounts have you in total provided to your customers. Another example could be number of form submissions. Of course, I mean, you could just use the event count metric and have the form ID, for example, as a dimension, but also you can send the number of form submissions as custom metric. And then in a report like this, we could have a third metric which would be form submissions. So in some cases, it makes more sense and it is more flexible to create custom metrics. And in fact, as of the moment of recording this video, Google Analytics 4 allows you to have up to 50 custom metrics per property. All right, so that's enough of the theory. And now let's take a look at how can we implement this video views metric in Google Analytics 4. Here I have a demo website where you can see an embedded YouTube video player. Let's say that every time a visitor starts playing a video, then we will send a custom metric to Google Analytics 4. At the end of this tutorial, we will also build a sample report for this. If you have been using the built-in video tracking in Google Analytics 4, you will have to disable it because you cannot enrich automatically tracked events with custom metrics properly in GA4. So go to admin of your Google Analytics 4 property, then data streams, select your website data stream, then click this icon in the enhanced measurements section. And if you have video engagement enabled, disable it, then click save. What we are going to do instead is that we will use Google Tag Manager to track video events and send a custom metric with it. Here I have a demo Google Tag Manager container, which is installed on this website. If you have no idea how to install Google Tag Manager, then I will post a tutorial below the video. So watch that first and then come back here. Also, in this container, I have Google Analytics installed. If you don't know how to do that, then I will post a link to another tutorial also below this video. The configuration of this tag is fairly basic. I just fire it on initialization all pages and inside this tag, I just have the measurement ID of my GA4 property. That measurement ID can be found in the data stream settings right here. In your case, the value will be different. 
So once these requirements are met, I mean, Google Tag Manager is installed and Google Analytics is installed in Google Tag Manager, then we can go to triggers and create YouTube triggers. Let's click new trigger configuration and then YouTube video. In this case, we will create one trigger for start event and the other trigger for complete and progress. The reason why we are doing this is because we will send the custom metric only with the start event. Then in this trigger, enable JavaScript API support. Then you can leave all the other settings as they are. And let's name this trigger. Then click Save. Now let's create one more YouTube trigger for the other events. Click New, Trigger Configuration, then YouTube video and disable start because we already have a trigger for that. And instead we will select complete and progress. So every time the visitor watches, let's say 10% of the video, then we will track that event. Let's also fire on 25%, 50, 75 and 90, for example, then enable JavaScript API support. And let's name this trigger. Click save. Then let's go to variables because we will need to use some video related variables. In my container, I already have enabled them. But in your case, if you don't see variables such as video duration or video percent or video status in the variables section, then click configure and then scroll down and click checkboxes next to all of these video variables. The next step will be to create Google Analytics for event tags that will send video events to GA4. So let's go to tags, then click new tag configuration, Google Analytics and GA4 event. Here you should paste your measurement ID. And as I've already shown you, you can find it in the admin panel and the settings of your data stream. So once you enter this here, you can enter the event name. This tag will be for the event when the video is started. That's why we can just name it video start. And then we will pass several event parameters. Since Google Analytics already has the built in video tracking, even though we have disabled it, we could still use the naming convention of those video parameters. So below this video, you will find a link to the documentation of GA4 enhanced measurement. Scroll down and keep looking for video events. And here we have things such as video current time, video duration, video percent provider title and video URL. So let's copy them one by one. Copy this and in the event parameters section, click add event parameter and paste it right here. Then you can add another parameter and copy this, paste it right here, then copy video percent and paste it right here, then add one more for the video provider. And then let's continue with video title plus the video URL. Now the values, we already have the built in video variables enabled. That's why we can just click here for the video current time, and then find the variable for that particular value. Do the similar thing for the video duration. So here we will be looking for the variable video duration. Then if you are more experienced with Google Tag Manager, you can enter things faster just by typing double curly braces and then start typing video and select percent. Then you can look for the video provider, video title and video URL. Then in the triggering, click anywhere and select start trigger. Finally, let's name this tag. Later in this video, we will add the custom metric. But right now we are just building the general setup of video tracking. So now I will just name this tag and click Save. Then let's create the other tag for complete and progress events. Instead of creating everything from scratch, we can make a copy of this. So let's click on video start, then click three dots, copy, and let's rename this to video progress and video complete. In the event name, we should remove the start and we can insert a variable which is called video status. It will return either progress or complete depending on what kind of event was tracked. So in that case, with one field, we will cover both event names. 
You can do that by clicking this button and then selecting video status. So video underscore video status. And the final output of this will be either video progress or video complete. Then let's keep all the other parameters as they are because they are still related to videos. And then in the triggering, click the pencil to remove the start trigger. So click here and instead add the complete and progress trigger. So that's the setup, click save and let's test if this basic setup is working. And if yes, then we will add the custom metric afterwards. So click preview and then enter the URL of the website where you have an embedded YouTube video player. Click connect. Now I will click play. I will wait for a bit to reach the 10% mark. And if I go to tag assistant tab, I click the first video event and I see the video start. And if I click on the second one, I will get the other tag fired. So here, if I click this and expand here, you will see what kind of information do we have like video provider, video URL, video title. And here on the second event, we also have those values. And if we click on the tag, you will see that this is what we sent to Google Analytics for. And the event name is video progress in this case. Now, if I go to Google Analytics, then go to admin and then select debug view. Here I should see those video events. Video start is already here. So if I click the event, I will see some automatically tracked parameters, for example, page location, but I also see some video related parameters. And then eventually I got the video progress event as well. And if I click it, I also have some video data. So this was the general setup. Now let's add a custom metric. As I've said earlier, we will send that metric only when the video starts. To add a custom metric, go back to your Google Tag Manager, and then we will select the video start event. Here, among current event parameters, we will add one more. And we can name this whatever we want because that's a custom metric, so we can come up with the name. But I would highly recommend that you follow the naming convention of GE4, which means that the parameters should be all lowercase and connected with the underscore. In other words, this is called snake case. So we can come up with a name for the metric, let's say video view. And every time this event fires, we want to increase that metric by one. So if three people start the video, then this event will fire three times and each event will increase the metric by one which means that the total value of metric will be three. That's why we will just enter one. Click save. Let's test this again. So I will click preview to refresh the preview mode. The preview mode has refreshed and now I can click play and I can wait for a bit until I get that video progress event as well. All right, so after I paused the video, I go to the first YouTube video event and if I click the tag I will see that among all of these parameters I'm also sending video view and its value is one. Then here the different tag fired and this tag does not contain the metric so everything goes as expected. Now if I go to the debug view I should expect to get the video start but sometimes debug view messes things up and it just doesn't show while I still get the video progress. So let me check the video progress event. And this one does not contain the video view metric, which is correct. But to get that video start event again, let me refresh the page and start the video. So even till this day, the debug view still is kind of annoying sometimes because sometimes it just doesn't show certain events. But if you waited for 24 hours and then check the event data tomorrow, you would still see that second video start in your reports, for example, explorations or standard reports. So it took me to wait several more minutes, but eventually I got the video start event. And if I click it right here and scroll down, I will see that among all the video parameters, I also have the video view of which value is just one. So the Google Tag Manager setup is done. 
If this was a real project, I would then go to GTM, click Submit and publish this version. The next step is to register that custom metric in Google Analytics 4. So first, you will need to get the name of the parameter that you're sending. In my case, that is video view. So I will just copy it. And then I will go to Google Analytics, admin, then custom definitions, custom metrics, and create custom metric. Here you can add a name to your metric. This will be visible in the reports. For example, video views makes sense. Then the scope will be event. Description can be empty, doesn't matter. And then here you have to enter the exact parameter that you configured in Google Tag Manager. If you don't see any autocomplete suggestions right here, don't worry, this is fine. Just paste the name of the parameter and also select unit of measurement, which in this case should be standard, then save. So once this is done, and once you have published your changes in Google Tag Manager, then wait for at least 24 hours, because Google Analytics 4 requires more time to process the data. And then tomorrow, or ideally even the day after tomorrow, you should check your reports, and you should be able to use this metric. In fact, right now I will pause the video and I will check the reports tomorrow and I will show you how to build a sample report. All right, 24 hours have passed. Now let me show you how to build a basic report. For this example, I will be using explorations. Let's click explore, then click blank. And let's build a report where we see the page pass and also we see how many times was each page viewed and how many video views happened on those pages. So in the dimensions section, click plus and select page path, then choose any of these dimensions, for example, page path and screen class, then click import. And in metrics, we will add two metrics. The first one is views, which means page views. And also we will select video views, which is our custom metric, click import. Now let's double click on these items to add them to the report. And we will see the list of pages, how many times was each page viewed, and how many times embedded videos were started to play on these pages. And we can see that on this page, we have six video views. And that's how you can configure custom metrics in Google Analytics 4. If you found this video useful, hit the like button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.